And I'm Sawyer. And you're listening to Our House A to Z. All right, so I'm going to be doing a lot of the talking on this one because Ashley is eating lunch. In the middle of the day when you're famished, but you pull out your favorite right now as we speak. Babe, you do most of the talking usually, and also I'm usually eating lunch during the podcast recording or eating something. You're usually just eating a little acai bowl. You're de- you defrost it, it an really, acai bowl. It could bowl. be anything. It could be anything, but usually I'm eating something. And I think about that as part of like when I think about what people think about me. I yeah. wonder if they always envision me eating because I feel like I'm always like picking at something or snacking on something or saying if I'm not, I'm usually like, man, I'm so hungry. I do. <laughs> I'll say that. I envision you when I think of you. I think of you eating. But, I, but, I, but I'll say this. In your visions, what am I eating? It doesn't matter. <laughs> but I feel like it's because you're happier when you're eating. Real time silence. Babe. <laughs> I, First of I, I all, mean, great. but at the same time, fair. I mean, I mean it's like... You know, I like I prefer you eating. Oh because my gosh. You're, you're a happier person. So. Like really, it's that much distinctly like more happy that if not, I'm it's eating. Not, it's, it's not you like like fisting French fries. It's oh not my like gosh. like something like terrible. It's like just you know anything it could be like a handful of almonds or I will say you know, like if a, I'm like not a celery eating, stick. if I'm not or if I'm hungry, it's never a celery <laughs> stick unless it's dipped, dipped in peanut in, butter. Uh, dip, dipped in fair. ranch dressing. <laughs> I would say that I probably am one of those people that is, like, irritated when I'm hungry. Hangry, we call that, right? Yeah. Well, some people call it that. But I don't like that term, but I definitely am, like, a little bit – I can feel myself a little bit edgy if I'm starting to get, like, very hungry. Okay. Like, Sundays. Like, catch me before first. Catch me after first. Catch me outside. How about that? But don't catch me – After second. Catch you outside. After second. After second service – I'm now, like, see, get me I, out to the car here's what or I don't understand. somebody pass me a snack. The, the, I don't have a lot of patience for people who are irritable when they're hungry because it's like, at what point do you just Is slide? Is it like your fault? S- well, slide a power bar in your purse or your pocket or yeah. like, for me, it's like I always have a package of Pop-Tarts hidden on my purse oh somewhere gosh. at any given time. And, you know, there's a pocket somewhere with a Pop-Tart in it. I'm going to pull it out and eat it if I get hungry. Bam. I would just like to say if Problem I had solved. food hidden anywhere, the kids would have already eaten it or somebody would have. Well, apparently now mice would have eaten it because and, that's, <laughs> or a new, mice. that's a new problem. Exactly. It is what it is, baby. You married me. I was snacking then. I'm snacking now. My girl and be snacking. And I just like. Bam! Snacks on snacks. <laughs> I like different things. I like the taste of food. Yeah, like I like different do too. things. I like all the different flavors. Like right now, I'm eating curry because well, I, just, I just, I just, I had, like it. I just had lunch with Michael Stetson, and he said something like, "Oh, are you a foodie or are you an eater or something?" He had like some because and you're like no, but my wife is. No, I didn't say that. Thank um, you. I said I didn't used to be until I met my wife. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm the same way. Like, I love food. I love good food. I'm a food, like, critic, like an amateur novice, mm. you know, self critiquer, co- self proclaimed food critic. I like it. You know? Well, I know Ben got us these mute buttons for, like, coughing or, like, loud noises, but I think he just got it for me because I'm always. Like chewing something. Chewing something. <laughs> could be worse. Could be tobacco. You know? So thank God. Packing that skull. Yes, it could be. Um, here's something else. We have our big sweet bread delivery next week. Hey, hey, hey. So I'm very excited about that. We are hitting 6,800 houses in Swansea. Well, residences That's in Swansea. Nuts. It's going to be crazy. Go but ahead. I'm excited. Talk about it. Why? I think it's really fun. I love getting all of like the church family together to work on a project. And I love projects that where everybody can be engaged. It's not really like a specific people group. You don't need a skill set to do it. That is not very the nice way to say it. No, no. But I'm just I saying say like, like, well, like we're everybody doing. Everybody can be involved. I mean, like we're doing <clears throat> demo and we like do an announcement, but you're not going to get like 80 year old women probably in there humping wheelbarrows and demo out of stores out to but a dumpster. But maybe you will. Maybe. What but... about 80 year old men? Would you get them? Maybe not. I we... feel like that was it... a sexist I'm, comment. I'm just going to say when they come, I'm nervous. The... I'm nervous. I'm like, Men all right, and women. Yeah, let's get that ambulance on standby, you know? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, any anybody. That's what I mean when I say skill set. You can jump in. There's something for you to do. There's so. something for you to do. We need all the um, help we can get. We do, kind of. I mean, we have a lot of help. We have a lot of help right now. At this point, we're going to need more drivers, drivers. and, like, runners, like yeah. people who are physically capable to carry bread to doors. Yeah. It's kind of what we're okay. looking for more of. Well, listeners, so you So you have time. You if you're it. listening Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, you still have time. Yep. We need you. Okay. So today we've got a guest speaker with us for our topic. Not somebody who's unfamiliar with the podcast and not really a guest because she's been here before. 
Okay, I stand corrected. She's back. She, she's neither. <laughs> she's back with us. She is my sister-in-law. I just want to put that out there because we have this incredible blessing of working with family and God's just uh, done so many cool things with vision and with propulsion. And Kim Gagney is with us today and she's talking about a very real and present thing that is happening as we speak. And that is the river, health and wellness. So, yeah, give us an overview. Where did this come from? Take us from the top. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. Where did this come from? I honestly would have to give all credit to the Lord. Amen. This was definitely not something we came up with on our own, and especially in this season. Uh, it's something he has totally led us to. Awesome. Do you want me to give some background on how yeah. we got here? Yeah, okay. for sure. All right. Because I think a lot of people are kind of like, oh, uh, clinic, what is it? Like, what is the connection? You know, you hear clinic and you think church and you think like missions project or you think, what is this going to look like? How is this going to be? What's the connection? Is it just next door? How is it run? What separates this from any urgent care or doctor's office? You know, so yeah. we can get to that in a minute. But yeah, give us some more background. Yeah, I think for years, my husband, John, had been saying that he just really felt like we were being called into, you know, more with the medical field. And he kept drawing pictures of the Swansea Mall and then putting a star over a location and saying, we need to have something medical related here. And this conversation went on and on. There was a picture of the mall hanging in his office and it became a joke. And so the joke went like this. John would say, we need a medical clinic or something of that sort. And I would say, we need an emergency room doctor. And we would have this kind of joking, bantering back and forth. Yeah. And I resigned from Rhode Island Hospital on a Friday. And on Sunday, received a text from an emergency room doctor that I did not know um, in the community that wanted to hear about the Lord's vision for a medical facility over here wow. and the Swansea Mall campus. I feel like you skipped a lot of steps in that story. <laughs> a lot of steps, yeah. But, there are a lot of steps, but it's a yeah. long story, and yeah. it's all really story. cool. But I'd love for you kind of just to tell everybody, like, why is it different? Why do we need another medical center somewhere? Because there's plenty of them to go around. Yeah, I think that what has happened in medicine across the country is that the layers, the items that have been put between patients and physical care have just grown and grown and grown. The insurance, the paperwork, the referrals, everything that separates the patient from care. Not only the patient from care, but from whole body care. And so looking at the person as a whole, it's become a very rushed industry where there's no time to truly take care of people, but not just take care of them for that half an hour appointment that they're in, take care of them throughout all of the different places in their life, whether that be keeping them out of the hospital and keeping them at home, whether that be truly knowing the patient. I think that has really become a, a lost art, mm. but also having the ability to pray with patients and uh, believing the Lord for healing. That's so cool. You know, you and I have had so many conversations about this already, but this is the very first time I think that I'm understanding, as you're saying, like there are so many layers between the patient and the care, and it's become such a rushed industry. And those two things, it makes perfect sense to me why this is here, because I feel like as a church, we're confronting the exact same two problems in people's Christian walk. There have become so many things now that come between a believer and the Lord and church as a whole, as an experience has become such a rushed thing. It's like check a box. It's make sure that we can say on paper that this is available, even though the real encounter is such a rushed, obligatory, like open a file, close right. a file, walk in a room. Well, it's like, how can I check all these boxes and still feel so unhealthy? Yeah, exactly. And then be prescribed how many things and still and actually be worse off for mm. it. I think that you, you perfectly described unintentionally where church has gotten to. And so it makes perfect sense that God would drop a vision here to see the same issues addressed in medicine. Yeah, I think the medical industry as a whole is moving at such a fast pace in so many different directions with so many different agendas. And so one example is we were talking about just the amount of forms you're handed when you go into an appointment, even for a pediatric appointment, where you walk in to an appointment and just like if you picture this, it's like get on the scale, which nobody likes to do. <laughs> Followed by a suicide screening, mm -hmm. followed by home a safety. home safety screening, followed by a, a depression and anxiety screening, depression and mm -hmm. anxiety screening, followed by a new question that's being asked in pediatric offices, which is which gender are you identifying with today? Mm -hmm. And so 
as a whole, that has become the first 15 minutes of a medical appointment. Right. And so those are the layers that we're talking about and getting back to medical care. Right and patient care. Right. And one thing that I love about it, and I know because I've seen this so often, is everything is just a million tests. Like you go for something, it's like, okay, well, we're going to test this, 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 and this, and then we're going to treat you for the symptoms, and then we're going to treat the results of that thing we put you on with a different prescription that's going to just add on and add on, and it's never getting to like what the actual cause of the problem is or something. Right. Yeah. There's an entire, you know, part of the industry is fear-based practice where it's safer to order the testing yeah. Then risk being wrong instead of allowing your medical knowledge and or um, common sense, common sense and yeah. discernment guide your treatment and your care. Do you remember that old movie uh, Doc Hollywood with Michael J. Fox? No. No. Oh, okay. He's like this like big city doctor, this young hotshot doctor that comes into this tiny town. And there's like this ancient doctor there. And this kid comes in with a stomach ache. And Doc Hollywood, Michael J. Fox is all like, you know, like he wants to run all these tests. He think it's this, it's that, you know, like all like worst case scenarios. You jumped all this stuff. And the old doctor that's there. He, he like he, passes him a Tums. No, it's a Coke. Oh. He opens a Coke <laughs> and he hands him a Coke. And, he, and he's like, here, drink this. And the kid drinks it. He's like, oh, I'm feeling so much better now. They're like, Doc's like, well, you know, what do I owe you or whatever? The guy, the kid, and, and he's like $1.50 or whatever it is for the oh Coke instead of, you know. And I, I think of that sometimes, like how much we've overcomplicated it. And I also feel like a lot of times doctors and healthcare professionals get a bad rap for this. But really, I see it as the byproduct of a culture now that is lawsuit happy. Yeah, of and course. And so many of these guys, you just said it. You have to protect yourself. Yep. Right. You have to run every test under the book, not because you just want to rack up medical bills for these people, but because your medical license is on the line if there was one thing you could have done that you didn't do. Right. And I think, you know, if anyone has been to a local hospital in the past six months to a year, you recognize that the hospital systems are completely overrun. You can't get into an emergency department to be seen without waiting an eight to 10 hour wait on average for things that don't even require emergency department level of care, but your primary care doctor won't see you in the office because you're symptomatic of some sort or because they don't have availability. And so you're referred to the emergency department and that is crumbling the healthcare system. So I think being able to meet that need for people when you walk through an emergency department and you see what patients are up against and fighting and knowing that they're there for maybe tests they don't even have to have run yeah. just to protect the liability yeah, yeah is it, just something we're really looking forward to being able to do mm. now what would you say are like the top questions that you're asked when people are finding out information about the river finding out this new way to possibly engage with health care what are like the most common questions that people are wanting answered I think the most common question is about health insurance oh yeah right. so I think that as a society we've equated health insurance with health care mm-hmm. we relate the two things in our mind if we have health insurance, we have health care. But the truth is, a lot of people have health insurance, but they're unable to access health care because of the capacity constraints right now. And so the River is not a medical organization that accepts insurance. It's a cash-based membership system. So it's very different. And I think that's been the newest piece for people to get used to because it is such a change. Mm. Yeah. So talk to us a little bit about that. What is the biggest difference in terms of, okay, so you have with everybody's situation or like 90 Eight percent of people's situation, they have health insurance. Blue because they're Cross required, or right? In the state of Massachusetts, you're mandated to have health insurance, right? And so a lot of people are on state health, mm-hmm. and a lot of people are on, you know, whatever their Obamacare. company, their place of business just provides. Yeah. So they go to the doctor, and then they get what they need, and then they start getting bills in the mail for that. What does this look like in terms of you're saying cash based private member? What does yeah. that look like in real time? So I would say if you can think of it like a gym membership, where you pay a monthly membership to have your health care needs met to have a team manage your care and help keep you out of the hospital. And so what that looks like is there's no extra bills. We keep joking about the bill that you get in the mail that says this is not a bill, but it's like a bill. (laughs) It's just to prep you (laughs) for all the bills that are coming. (laughs) Yeah. So basically there is no additional bills. Um, You come and you get seen and treated and cared for in a really personal way. And there's no additional costs for any of that. Hmm. Now, what kind of health care can the river at this point offer? Should someone come here if they have an infected splinter or a broken finger or... Or requiring stitches or... Or a sore throat. Right. You know? Yeah, I think we have the capacity between our faith-based community nurses that are here at the church 
and our medical provider to be able to meet all of those needs. Very cool. Can you talk a little bit about, just because this is starting to become a buzzword and I think it's really interesting how God sort of makes a way for things like this to happen long before they actually happen. Can you talk for a minute about parish nursing? Yeah. So parish nursing is actually a really cool thing. If you look it up or you search it, it goes by two different names. One is parish, one is faith-based community nursing. And it's nurses that are part of, uh, this is going back, I think, to the 1950s, where nurses in the church communities, they used to partner with the local hospitals and the hospital would pay half their salary and the church would pay half their salary and they would take care of the church community. So they would call them members of the church, but it could be additional members of the community. And their job is health prevention, wellness, advocacy, training, checking in on patients in the community and being able to help be responsible for your church community's health care needs and also bring that out into your general community. And so this has been going on in churches across the country for a really long time. But the more I read about it, it's exactly what nurses are called right. to do in caring for their community. And it reminds me so much of Call the Midwife. It's I always exactly that like, <laughs> it's like that. They're doing like yeah. prenatal care. They're doing yeah. like home visits and yeah. like checking in and making sure it's like safe for a baby to come back to the house and all of that. And that's something you guys have talked about too, is like going to houses for care as well. A hundred percent. Yeah. That is part of the goal. I think that um, if you've heard us talk about just one family in the church that we gave an example of that was discharged home from the hospital with with dressing changes that needed to be done and couldn't get a visiting nurse company because of staffing to come to the house. And we gathered the church nurses together and were able to put them on a schedule and do the dressing changes and bring meals and pray Mm -hmm. and do all of the other pieces of ministry that you want to partner with nursing. That's so good. You know, I think what comes to my mind is we're leading and shepherding and we're talking with people. My biggest challenge and encouragement to people is right now, our faith is in a system that we are watching crumble, I think was the word you used a minute ago. And I would be so dramatic as to say, we're watching it implode. It's falling in on itself. It's an unsustainable system. Our faith, is that what you said? Our our faith is in an unsustainable healthcare system. Mm -hmm. Our government-based healthcare, uh, pharmaceutical-based healthcare, Mm -hmm. it no longer has the goal of actual curing healing, treating, you know what I'm saying? It's self-perpetuating. And that's just one of the many problems. But I think to believers in a first world country, we have not been challenged in this area. Yeah. For generations, we have not been challenged in this area. And in one way, it's like, well, that's a huge blessing because we live in a country that has sought to stand up and provide this. But at the same time, or maybe hold it accountable or whatever. But at the same time, it's gone so far in one direction that I sense a season for the church to come back to faith, right. to come back to their faith community, to come back to the Lord and say, okay, even though this is outside the box, even though this wasn't my plan and I had just hoped that my insurance would always be what I needed and my health care would just always be there. These are things that actually in other first world countries that are maybe 15 to 25 years ahead of where we are, you can look at some of these European countries and some of these other neighboring countries and say, wow, we're headed in that direction and it's not working. Right. Yep. And so we need to be able to stop dead in our tracks and say, okay, Lord, what does faith-based healthcare really look like? And what is that going to require for me? What step of faith is that going to require? And that's why I feel like when it comes to something like insurance and something like, okay, it feels like there's some unknowns here. Like, where are the limitations? You know, Um, what do we do with catastrophic, you know, type injuries and things like that? And at some point, faith is going to be required Mm -hmm. again from the church. Mm -hmm. Right. I think it's so good. You know, first of all, before I share this next part, I want to acknowledge all the doctors and nurses that are out there working in the healthcare industry that are feeling the stressors of all of it and are not in it for just the business aspect and all of those things. Because, I mean, we have so many even in our church that Mm -hmm. are actively working within the healthcare systems and for the genuine love of people and wanting the best for people. And so it is not across the board a bad thing or full of bad people, but it's a business. There's so many aspects of it that are a business. And we, like Zach was saying, as Christians have fallen prey to the business aspect of it solely based on our fear. You know, like you're saying, our faith is being challenged and our faith is being challenged because that fear within us has grown exponentially to say, I need every unknown known. Yeah, I need to make sure that everything that seems uncertain in my life, I can have an answer to. Right. And so we will go with every single test that we can take in order to ease our minds because we want to rest on that system instead of the faith piece that Zach was talking about. And so that challenge is hard. 
that is a hard thing to say, like, all right, I'm going to not get every single test that I'm offered. Right. And why not? And when is it like right to pursue something? And Mm -hmm. when is it I'm just going to trust the Lord on this one or seek direction? Like, how do you go about that in the building of the faith of the church community? And and how often are we really making health decisions based on whatever a doctor's recommendations are versus what our convictions are? Mm. And that's what I love about this is you're gathering a group of healthcare professionals who will be making recommendations based on spiritual convictions rather than a system that Mm. tells us, well, you do this and then you do this and then you do this. So talk a little bit about how you've gathered in the interview process and yeah, I think, personnel is everything. I think that one of the follow-up questions to what Ashley asked too, just what are people asking? And we continuously hear, how is this going to be different? And I think that is a challenge because how are we going to do this different when it's so easy to go to the old way, yes, right? And course. so as we've been praying into this, we just continue to see this picture of Noah standing there with the blueprints for the ark and never have seen rain and never have been on a boat and Mm -hmm. having to build something that the Lord's called them to without knowing truly what he wants to see at the end of it or what it's going to look like. And I think that's the heart posture that we've gone into this with in our team as well. So we were really looking for a really well-rounded team that had many different experiences. So we actually have a certified parish nurse on the team who's done all of the training in parish nursing and pediatrics and emergency room work and you know, emergency room physician, I think people underestimate just their skill set and the level of things that they see on a daily basis. They, they can do anything. They can do anything. They yeah. just have such like a maverick ability to treat so many different illnesses from pediatric to adult. So just a really nice, well-rounded team. I love it. And, you know, speaking of the personnel, so like that's something that for HPC, I think that that's a heart thing for us, a DNA thing from the beginning, which was like, it's so important to know like who's in the game, like who's on the bus, who's on the boat, who's leading what and how folks are being gathered and handpicked and compiled. And I remember when COVID first was happening and you had all of these healthcare professionals who were still going to work every day and they're like in the thick of the absolute unknown, like all the reports are coming in from around the world. People are dying in droves. And here you have our healthcare professionals and hence all the signs and all the high fives and all the love and support and everything for all these people. And at the turn of a dime, at the dawn of the vaccine, all of the heroes of our country were villainized. Not all of them, but anybody who had a conviction like, no, I'm not going to get this vaccine. Suddenly you went from being, wow, like God's greatest gift to actually you're the enemy now. And I've just been amazed at, again, that was just another indicator of how culturally we shift with the ebb and flow of whatever anybody's saying. Instead of saying, okay, no, like Ashley just said, there are good God-fearing people who are making decisions based on the spirits leading in their lives. That's who I want caring for me. Not somebody who's worried about a lawsuit, you know? And I do, I love the fact that you guys have put so much prayer into this, these interviews and, and the onboarding. Yeah. So thank you for that. No, I think that was a really hard season. I think for many healthcare professionals in so many different ways. And, you know, one of the last questions that we've been asked is, what will we be required to do as patients? People have asked about vaccination status and decision making for their children and all of that. And I think that one of the most important things to us is that we will continue to present solid healthcare advice and information and to the best of the knowledge of the healthcare professionals mixed with the spiritual component, but that we want people to be able to be autonomous in their healthcare decisions, mm-hmm. to be able to seek the Lord individually for what he has for them, for treatment, for vaccination, for medication, for all of those things but allowing people to be led independently to make those decisions. So good. All right. So if people want more information, they're going to the River Health and Wellness website, which That's is... That's right. T-R-H-W.org. <laughs> T-R-H-W yep. dot org. The River Health and um, Wellness dot yep. org. You can yep. also... There's a direct link off of the church website, hpc.church, yeah. too. And then just tell us, I know that the membership fee... We don't have to talk about the exact prices if you don't want to, but there's the family plan, there's a couple's plan, and then there's the individual's plan, and that's a monthly fee. That's a monthly fee, yeah. And so it's just the first of every month that that's 
just similar to a gym membership like we talked about. But that fee or that donation towards this health ministry is really just to cover the salaries of the staff and the supplies. Mm -hmm. The church has been gracious to be able to allow us to utilize space. And because of just incredible giving and support for this, we've been able to get kicked off by just some really great donations. So that is what the whole purpose of the membership fee is, is just as a health ministry to be able to provide coverage. Right. And it's exciting and it kicks off April 11th. Monday. So it's like officially opening yeah. on April 11th. And it's such a great space. Like Ashley and I, you, we were just walking mm-hmm. down there this morning and it's like, it's beautiful. It feels comfortable. Somehow you've taken a little corner store in the middle of a mall and you've turned it into like a safe space where it feels like the atmosphere is already conducive. Right. More more so than I'd say a standard doctor's office. That's for right. sure. Yeah. So now I know that some of the services provided are urgent care. Is that something somebody can walk in and get care for if they had a medical emergency? down the street today. Yeah, I think as long as they're well, willing... Not, not till Monday. Not, not, yeah, after Monday. On Monday, yeah. <laughs> I think as long as they're willing to sign up and become a member, that's really important to just providing the care is that that will happen for members. But you can sign up on the spot to become a member. And, you know, we're in a temporary spot now for the next month or so while our space is being built out. But the temporary spot is really great. Mm-hmm. We're going to do a lot of new patient visits there and be able to really get things rolling. All right. So now is this only for local people? in this Swansea general area or is it can somebody across the country be a part of it or is it not like that? So I would say for the nurses we'll go wherever our church community is so Mass Rhode Island wherever our church community is within driving distance that we can go to meet a need we will. From a provider standpoint for prescribing those prescriptions are for specifically the state of Massachusetts or Rhode Island where the license is held. So so it is both those states? Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. So couldn't prescribe in Florida. Outside of the state. Okay. Yeah. But for the local. Okay. Country, yep. Cool. I love it. And you know what? Just uh, let me speak to this before I let you go. You said that you wanted, while it is faith-based, you also said there's a a family component to like, we want to extend you the freedom to decide for your kids. You know, we're not mandating vaccines or certain this or that or confidentiality clauses with your nine-year-old, you know, that we're not going to share with a parent. I remember in one of the info sessions Mm -hmm. that there was a mom there who was asking those sorts of things. And I was thinking, isn't it crazy that we're in a time, we're in a season when protective mothers have to be concerned about that sort of thing? Like, I want to like take a couple steps back from that because I know that that's just, it's so in the news and on the forefront of everything that we almost have grown a little cows to it. But as I'm listening to this mom, and I didn't know the woman, and she was asking like, you know, will my kids be required to do this, this, and this? And I'm thinking, man, how far have we come? And so when we say that this is faith-based healthcare, to me, I don't even need to say family because to me, faith-based is family-based. Faith-based equals family-based. We need to trust that the Holy Spirit is leading you, mom and dad, in how to lead your family. And again, you may get recommendations from a nurse or a doctor that you disagree with, and that's okay. And they may be able to give you some great reasons and some you know, education resources on, hey, here's something you may want to consider doing this. But I think it's so important that at the end of the day that the autonomy and the freedom is given back. It's put in the hands of the family to make those decisions, period. Yeah, I think that's great. Period. And if anybody wants to stop in next week, we're having a little bit of an open house um, as we're seeing new patients. So Monday, Tuesday or Thursday, if you want to come between nine and four, our staff is there. If you want to meet anyone, if you want to ask questions, if you want to fill out your paperwork, anything like that, we would love to have you stop by this coming week. I love it. Thank you so much, Kim. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. All right. Did you want to, babe, you want to close in prayer? No? You want me to? I I just feel like you're such a good ender, rapper, upper. Oh, okay. I'll take that. I'll take whatever I can get, you know, in terms of compliments or affirmation. I mean, it just really blesses me. So I appreciate that. Tough life. All right. So, Father, we just we thank you. Um, We thank you for John and Kim. We thank you for Dr. Littlefield. We thank you for Ashley and um, Amanda and Michelle and just the incredible group of people that have come together to make hard decisions and to cast vision and to pioneer a new way and a new path, God, in the middle of a culture that's moving downstream. Lord, I thank you for people who are willing to put in the work to paddle the opposite direction. Lord, I pray that um, that they would be strengthened. We pray for endurance for these folks. We pray for provision. And Lord, that our church community and our, and our uh, regional community, that we would become a part of that victory and a part of that vision and provision. Lord, that we would step up in faith and forsake the faith that we've had in the government and in public health care, and that we would shift our attention back to you as the great physician, as the balm of gift, 
Gilead. And so, Lord, I pray that there would be a boldness in your people, Lord, to have insight on the way things are going and to have insight on what your answer is to um, the problems of our culture and our healthcare today. So we give you the glory and we thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, our house friends and family, we will see you guys right here next Friday. This is Messer. And I'm Willa. This is our house from A to Z. Thanks for coming over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs>